PR Connections Radio presents Welcome to Vegas Hockey Hub here on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. I'm your host, Ian Rickelli. And what a fantastic show we have planned for you tonight. It's going to be an incredible show. It's going to be a lot of fun, entertaining stuff to talk about. And I will say to everybody watching around the world, it is time as it is getting closer and closer and closer to the NHL season. We are about a month away from the NHL rookie mini camps. We're also going to have training camps starting up in a little bit. So it's always going to be a fun time to talk about the NHL. So on this episode of Vegas Hockey Hub with your host, Ian Rickelli, we are going to be predicting the Vegas Golden Knights starting lineup on opening night. Now, the way we are going to predict this is I'm going to give you line one, then go to line two, line three, and line four on the forwards. Then we will do our defensive pairings, one, two, and three, and then go over the goaltending tandem and the potential healthy scratches your Vegas Golden Knights could have this upcoming season. So it's going to be a really good conversation. It's going to be a lot of fun going over your Vegas Golden Knights. So as we get into it, let's start out with the forward line number one. And this is really no shocker. This should not surprise anybody. As Ivan Barbashev, the guy who just got re-signed this past offseason, signed to a 5 by 5 deal. I mean, Ivan Barbashev, only 27 years old. Yes, I understand we had to get rid of Riley Smith, but Ivan Barbashev being brought back is during what he did in the postseason for your Vegas Golden Knights. It is smart. It is brilliant. It is a really good move by your Vegas Golden Knights to bring back Ivan Barbashev. And because they signed him to a 5 by 5 I say that the Vegas Golden Knights are going to take advantage of it and have him on line one and have the a line from this past playoff in Jack Eichel, Jonathan Marcheseau, and B- Ivan Barbashev on line one. I mean, after all, Ivan Barbashev is really qualified to be a first-line forward in the NHL. He did pretty solid in St. Louis. He was a solid winger. He is solid defensively, good on the back check, solid on the four check as well. I also like his ability to pass the puck, make plays for his teammates down the ice. I like what Arvin Ivan Barbashev has, his potential, and once again, him only being 27 years old. So Vegas will have him at the end of his 20s, at the beginning of his 30s. And I have to remind everyone, because this is what we're going to do here on tonight's show, give you a little bit of a recap of what these players did last year. In Ivan Barbashev's case, This is a guy who had 10 goals, 29 points in 59 games in the regular season for St. Louis, but he amped it up to 15 in the Stanley Cup playoffs as a trade deadline acquisition for your Vegas Golden Knights, as he had seven goals, 18 points in 22 games for your Vegas Golden Knights in the postseason last year. So Ivan Barbashev being brought back, he's going to be a first-line winger for your Vegas Golden Knights. And then you have your face of the franchise, Jack Eichel, at center. Of course, he is going to be your top center. He is going to be the best center you have on this team. Jack Eichel was a well-worth acquisition for the Buffalo Sabres two years ago. Jack Eichel, the $10 million man, the guy who Vegas is going to have for this year, next year, and year after that. But what makes Jack Eichel so special and his ability to score. He is one of the best snipers the NHL has. He is one of the most elite goal scorers the NHL has to offer today. And his stats last year backed that up as Jack Eichel had 27 goals, 66 points in 67 games for your Vegas Golden Knights. Essentially a point per game pace. And in the postseason, Jack Eichel had an argument for the Conn Smythe Trophy. In 22 postseason games, he had only six goals, but a whopping 26 points, which actually was among the leaders on your Vegas Golden Knights in the postseason last year. 
Now, what I love about the Jack Eichel being on the first line is that he has become a solid rock for your Vegas Golden Knights. When Jack Eichel's on the ice, he makes his line mates better. When Jack Eichel is on the ice at T-Mobile Arena or someplace else on the road, Jack Eichel is a force to be reckoned with. He is someone that you have to pay attention to night in and night out. And with his point-per-game pace that he had last year, if he plays a full 82-game season, do not be surprised at all if he has 80 points for your Vegas Golden Knights this upcoming year. And then at right wing, this is going to be a bit controversial, but I'm going to stick with what they did last year. I say that the Conn Smythe MVP, the finals MVP, the guy who has been the foundation, a pillar for your Vegas Golden Knights, will be on line one instead of who we have on line two. And of course, that is Jonathan Marcheseau. Now, Jonathan Marcheseau has been here for all six seasons that Vegas has been around. He has been arguably the best uh, expansion player the Vegas Golden Knights ever got during the expansion draft. And with Jonathan Marcheseau being on the final year of his deal, this is really going to be a make it or break it year for Jonathan Marcheseau when you figure out what he's going to have next year. Now, Marcheseau statistics last year, he had 57 points, 28 of them being goals, in 76 games. And then to win the Conn Smythe Trophy, Jonathan Marcheseau had 25 points in 22 games with a whopping 13 goals in the Stanley Cup playoffs to help your Vegas Golden Knights win a Stanley Cup. Now, my main reason for why I have Jonathan Marcheseau on line one and not our captain Mark Stone is because of chemistry. This past playoff, Ivan Barbashev, Jack Eichel, and Jonathan Marcheseau were put on the same line for 21 of the 22 games the Vegas Golden Knights had during the postseason. And if you have insane chemistry that works well, and if you had chemistry that won the Vegas Golden Knights a Stanley Cup championship, then I say you keep that momentum, you keep the chemistry around, and more importantly, you make sure if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. So for line one for your Vegas Golden Knights, Ivan Barbashev, him coming back on a 5x5, five five, your face of the franchise, Jack Eichel, and your Conn Smythe MVP and Jonathan Marcheseau on forward line one for your Vegas Golden Knights. As we are predicting the Vegas Golden Knights lineup for 2023-2024 here on Vegas Hockey Hub, I'm your host, Ian Rakelli. So forward line one was Barbashev, Eichel, and Marcheseau. Now forward line two is very fascinating as a Golden Knights fan. As someone who has watched the Vegas Golden Knights for the past six seasons, this forward line two is definitely a shakeup, but it is one that is very well deserved. Now, Brett Howden signing a two-year deal to be brought back to the Vegas Golden Knights. Brett Howden has normally been a bottom six forward in his career, and him only being 25 years old, he has some potential. And more importantly, his reason for being on the top six, for him being a middle six forward in the NHL, is due to chemistry and due to expectation for his upcoming two years. Now, Britt Howden has never had a performance over 15 points in a regular season. But I have to keep in mind, for Brett Howden, he's always been a bottom six forward, regardless if he was with the New York Rangers or he's been in Vegas for the past two years. He's never really been given a chance to be a top six forward. Well, during the Stanley Cup playoffs this past year, he was given an opportunity to be on the same line with Chandler Stevenson and the same line as our captain, Mark Stone. And Brett Howden took full advantage of it having five goals and 10 points during the playoffs for your Vegas Golden Knights. And Bruce Cassidy actually has given praise to Brett Howden and the way he plays the game. And he is someone that I see the potential. He is someone who is definitely uh, someone a misfit of sorts as the New York Rangers sent him back to the Vegas Golden Knights pretty much as a throwaway. And the Vegas Golden Knights took him in and has become a solid member of this team. I also have to keep in mind, for everybody who is watching, 
I've always said that Misfits has always been a part of your Vegas Golden Knights. And it's been true to a certain extent. Brett Howden is a misfit because of the fact the New York Rangers got rid of him as a low-risk kind of guy. And the Vegas Golden Knights go, took the high reward and benefited mightily from getting Brett Howden here in Vegas. The same for Chandler Stevenson. Chandler Stevenson was a bottom six forward in Washington. George McPhee knew him very well, traded for him. And ever since he's been in Vegas, he has been not only a top six forward, but he has been an all-star for the Vegas Golden Knights. Not only has Chandler Stevenson been an all-star, but he has also been the regular season MVP from this past year for your Vegas Golden Knights. We did that show a couple of months ago, and I mentioned how Chandler Stevenson was your MVP during the past regular season. And can you blame him, though? I mean, Chandler Stevenson, who's on the final year of his deal that he signed back in 2019. I mean, this is a Chandler Stevenson who had 65 points, 16 of them being goals during the regular season for your Vegas Golden Knights. And he racked up 10 goals, 20 points in 22 playoff games for your Vegas Golden Knights this past year. Now, I'm going to make an argument to you that the reason why Chandler Stevenson is at center and instead of left wing is because Chandler Stevenson is actually more suited as a center than as a winger in the NHL. Now, I understand that Chandler Stevenson has been a first-line winger at certain points in this in his career. I also understand that Chandler Stevenson has been a second-line winger at a certain point in his career. But my logic for Chandler Stevenson being at center and Brett Howden being at left wing is based off of what we saw this past playoff performance. Brett Howden is good at center, don't get me wrong, but he does a lot better at winger than at center. So for this forward line, I want to get the best center on this line, and that's Chandler Stevenson. And I want to get somebody who's more suited at winger, and that's Brett Howden. So I have Brett Howden at left wing, Chandler Stevenson at center, and then I have your captain, Mark Stone, at right wing. Now, I will mention with Mark Stone, yes, it is definitely an interesting look to have your captain on the second line. I mean, most teams have their captain on the first line. That's kind of been the standard for the NHL. But let me explain as to why I have him on the second line. Jonathan Marcheseau, him being the Conn Smythe MVP, him being an original misfit for your Vegas Golden Knights. This is a guy who has done it all in six seasons in Vegas. Mark Stone coming off that back injury, a guy who has been injury prone the last couple of years, but still a fantastic player for your Vegas Golden Knights. This is a Mark Stone that I think at the beginning of the season there's still going to be question marks about what Mark Stone can do long-term. So I say for Mark Stone, him playing 43 games last year for your Vegas Golden Knights, he played 37 games the year before that. So after having back-to-back -back years where Mark Stone has had injury problems and where Jonathan Marshall so has played majority of the games, I have your captain Mark Stone on line two for that reason. Because when it comes to Mark Stone, he would be good on line two. He's still a top six forward. But I think at this point, Mark Stone is not your best right wing. That is Jonathan Marcheseau. However, saying that Mark Stone is your second best right wing is actually a benefit and a blessing to your Vegas Golden Knights than a concern. Because Mark Stone is still a top 100 player in the NHL. Mark Stone is still a guy who, when he's healthy, had 17 goals this past year in 43 games for your Vegas Golden Knights. This is still a Mark Stone who had half a goal, half a goal per game in the Stanley Cup playoffs this past year. 11 goals in 22 games. So for forward line two, this is very simple. Brett Howden, the up-and-coming 25-year-old who they just extended, he will be at left wing. Chandler Stevenson, the rock the guy who has been pretty sturdy for your Vegas Golden Knights, 
will be at center. And then your captain, Mark Stone, will be at right wing. As we are pre predicting the Golden Knights lineup for 2023-2024 here on Vegas Hockey Hub on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. Now, let's continue with the middle six and get to forward line three. And I'm going to consider this kind of your young gun line for the Vegas Golden Knights. This is where your youngsters are really going to start taking effect. Paul Cotter, the guy who appeared in 55 games last year for your Vegas Golden Knights, the 24-year-old out of Michigan. This is a Paul Cotter who has just been extended. He will be on his new deal entering this year, thanks to Kelly McCrimmon. And when it comes to Paul Cotter, I really have to explain it like this. He will be entering his third season playing for your Vegas Golden Knights. This is a Paul Cotter who in 60 NHL games has had 15 goals so far. Paul Cotter is a goal scorer. And in a roundabout way, he's very similar to what Alex Tuck was in his first two years in Vegas. Alex Tuck was a guy who was very good, very explosive, solid speed, could get the puck in the back of the net. Paul Cotter does show certain tendencies on that same wavelength. I mean, this is a Paul Cotter who had 13 goals and 18 points in 55 games last year. Now, I understand that his defense could be a little bit suspect. I understand that. But for Paul Cotter, the offensive upside is what matters. And more importantly, with Riley Smith no longer being on the Vegas Golden Knights roster, that also opens more opportunities for the wingers on this team. And with Phil Kessel not being back on the team, it also opens up some more spots on the bottom six for your Vegas Golden Knights. So Paul Cotter, I have at left wing, someone who is going to be a good young addition as a permanent player for your Vegas Golden Knights. And I will say if Paul Cotter has a 20-point season on the bottom six, that would be a solid year here in Vegas on a full 82-game season. At center, you have Wild Bill, an original misfit, and William Carlson. And now this is no disrespect to William Carlson. This is no dig at William Carlson. But with how deep the depth is at center, William Carlson at this point is a third-line center for your Vegas Golden Knights. He is not better than Chandler Stevenson. He is not better than Jack Eichel. And he is not bad enough to be on the bottom, on the fourth line for your Vegas Golden Knights. He is not a bottom forward line in the NHL. So when it comes to William Carlson, a guy who is making near $6 million a year, once again, this is no dig at him, considering what he did last year, 14 goals, 53 points, 82 games. But with William Carlson, he is just in a log jam at center. There really is nothing I can do about that. William Carlson is just unfortunately the weak link between Jack Eichel, Chandler Stevenson, and William Carlson. Now, William Carlson going from line one to line three would be considered a downgrade, would be disappointing. But with William Carlson, I look at it as he is a solid veteran at this point, and he is going to be on a line with two young up-and-coming players in Round Beer and Cotter. And I think William Carlson will actually benefit from this because there'll be more opportunities to put the puck in the back of the net. There will be more opportunities to pass the puck around and create opportunities with these two young guys on line three. And speaking of uh, Giannis Roundbeer, this is a guy who I actually have making the starting lineup. I know there's some people who say he will go back down to Henderson, and those people have good logic. I'm not going to disagree with you. But in terms of Giannis Roundbeer, I think he's had enough seasoning in Henderson. After all, this will be his fourth season playing in the AHL. And this is a guy who has played 40 NHL games. He has had two goals and seven points. But when it comes to Giannis Roundbeer, it's not necessarily about his offensive production that is going to get him on an NHL roster. I will say that when it comes to Giannis Roundbeer, he is someone that's going to create opportunities off the edge. He is someone that will create opportunities on the off man, on the odd man rush. 
And when it comes to going from defense back onto the offense and transitions, transitions going into neutral zone, I like what Giannis Roundbeer has. I saw him in Henderson. I got to see him a few games here in Vegas. And I say that he has some solid upside. He has a good ceiling for your Vegas Golden Knights. And once again, he has spent four seasons in Henderson and last, and he has had back-to-back seasons of over 25 points in Henderson. So for the guy who is 24 years old out of Denmark, I look at Round Beer and I say his potential is now is time to put him on the forward line three and have him be alongside Paul Cotter and alongside William Carlson. So as we are predicting the Vegas Golden Knights lineup for 2023-2024. There is a message for everybody watching all around the world. Now that they are the Stanley Cup champions, the cost of tickets are no longer affordable for low- to middle-class fans without using credit cards. If the history of past teams who have won the Stanley Cup follows the BGK, watching at home and saving the cost on cards. Now, let me break this down. That's a two-part question. Of course, the tickets are no longer affordable because they're the Stanley Cup champions. It's called the Stanley Cup tax for a reason, okay? When you win a Stanley Cup championship, the tickets double in price. Because you are a Stanley Cup champion, everything doubles in price. Everything goes up in price. It's the Stanley Cup tax. Not only do you have to buy new memorabilia, not only do you have to pay more for parking, not only do you have to pay more for tickets, but when it comes to everything that goes into it, that is what the Stanley Cup tax is. It's just like if the Las Vegas Raiders won a Super Bowl, you would have to have a Super Bowl tax put on that. If the Las Vegas Athletics won a World Series, then there would be a World Series tax. In the NBA, if an NBA team ever came to Vegas, the sports and entertainment capital of the world, there would be a NBA Finals tax. Because once you win a championship, your prices are going to double or triple in certain cases. Because when you are the champ, you are the must-see. You are the box office attraction. You are what everyone's going to be looking at, and you are going to be what everyone's selling out to watch. So... I will say to that part of it, they could charge whatever they want. It's the Stanley Cup tax. It comes with the territory. And when you're talking about watching at home, well, they have that new TV deal. They're going to be not on Sportsnet anymore, but they're going to be on a new channel. You're going to be able to watch them there. Also, the Vegas Golden Knights this offseason agreed to be part of a streaming service. They have an exclusive streaming service deal, and that's going to be good for all the streaming fans that are part of the Vegas Golden Knights. So to really answer your question, I don't see any problem with it. I have no concern at all with that situation. Now, back to predicting the Vegas Golden Knights lineup for 2023-2024. We have the forward line number four. And of course, it is the same usual suspects we've had for the past couple of seasons. Keegan Colazar the guy who brings some durability, the guy who brings some stability to the bottom line. King Kolazar, he's tough, he's physical. He is somebody who does bring some good presence on defense. And I like what King Kolazar has done in his career. And when it comes to the Vegas Golden Knights, King Kolazar is someone they can trust here in Vegas. So King Kolazar being on line four, it makes a lot of sense understanding who he is as a hockey player. Nick Waugh as a fourth line center. Now, thanks to the log jam that the Vegas Golden Knights have at center, if he was on any other team, he would be a middle six four, it would be a middle six center. If Nick Waugh was on, let's say, Vancouver, he would not be a fourth line center. If he was on Washington, he would not be a fourth line center. In fact, there's probably a dozen teams in the NHL that Nick Waugh would not be a fourth-line center on the, in the NHL. But because he plays for your world champion Vegas Golden Knights, Nick Waugh, unfortunately, is placed as a fourth-line center. Now, his stats don't back up why he is the fourth-best center. Him having 14 goals, 16 assists in 65 games 
for your Vegas Golden Knights. It's also the same Nick Waugh that in the postseason had 11 points in 22 games, essentially half a point per game. But because of how talented the Golden Knights centers are, that's why Nick Waugh is here. And it's actually a luxury to your Vegas Golden Knights, the fact that they have a 15-goal score in Nick Waugh on line four, a 30-goal score in the past in William Carlson on line three, an all-star on line two in Chandler Stevenson, and your face of the franchise in Jack Eichel on line one. And then William Carrier, the guy who had a career resurgence last year. A guy in William Carrier who in the regular season had a career high 16 goals in the regular season this past year. This is a uh, William Carrier who eclipsed the 20 point mark for the first time in his career in back to back seasons. So for William Carrier, Nick Waugh, and King Colazar, they are going to be back together again for your Vegas Golden Knights, and there is going to be a good line here in Vegas. You know what? Him is also getting paid handsomely for being a fourth-line center, too. If we're really going to go that route, Nick Waugh is getting paid about $3 million to be a fourth-line center. So I don't think Nick Waugh has any complaints, any concerns at all. So as we have about four minutes left, we're going to go over the defensive pairings very quickly because it's kind of the usual suspects. On defensive pairing one, you have your two best defensemen on the ice, and your two best defensemen is Alex Petrangelo, one of the best two-way defensemen in hockey, and one of the best offensive defensemen in all of hockey in Shea Theodore. At this point, Shea Theodore is a one of your best defensemen on the Vegas Golden Knights roster. And I have always believed as a hockey fan that your defensive pairing one should be your best offensive defenseman and your best defensive defenseman on the same line. And by using that logic, Petrangelo on defense and Theodore on offense. That should be your defensive pairing one. Defensive pairing two, we have two former LA Kings, two guys who are great at what they do, and that is Braden McNabb and Alec Martinez. Alec Martinez will be will be blocking shots consistently, over 150 shots blocked uh, for the Vegas Golden Knights. And for Brave McNabb, he is durable, reliable, consistent. He has been a good misfit for the Vegas Golden Knights since they acquired him during the expansion draft. And your last line of your defensive pairing, not any changes here, you have Nick Hague and you have Zach Whitecloud. Now, Nick Hague and Zach Whitecloud, some very good upcoming guys. I like the potential. I like what they have. But because you have Martinez and Petrangelo, because you have Theodore and McNabb, the two young up-and-coming guys in Nick Hague and Zach Whitecloud are going to be your bottom, bottom pair defenseman pairing here in Vegas. Your goaltending tandem is not shocking at all. Them re-signing Aiden Hill after his Stanley Cup run. He is going to be your starting goaltender here in Vegas. And then your backup is going to be the all-star himself, Logan Thompson, the young up-and-coming goaltender who had a phenomenal sophomore year here in Vegas. So your starting goaltender will be Aiden Hill, and your backup will be Logan Thompson. Now your healthy scratches, I had to do a lot of investigation. I really had to break this down and figure it out the right way. But after all of my research and all of my notes I have made, I have concluded that your healthy scratches here in Vegas will be forward Michael Amadio, a guy who has been on line two, line three in the past. But because of the young guys being brought up, I think Michael Amadio squeezes in as a healthy scratch. You will have your seventh defenseman in veteran Ben Hutton. He has had the seventh defenseman role for the past two seasons in Vegas. He's reliable. He is someone that's going to play a little bit of time in Vegas every year. And then finally, I have the captain of the Henderson Silver Knights, Braden Bahal, as your final scratch here in Vegas. Braden Bahal, 24 years old. He is someone who has definitely proven in Henderson and in limited action here in Vegas that he is a very good up-and-coming defenseman in Vegas. So, 
That is our predicting the Vegas Golden Knights lineup for 2023-2024. Let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree. And once again, this was Vegas Hockey Hub here on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. I'm your host, Ian Rakelli. Follow us on social media at PR Connections Radio and at Vegas Hockey Hub. So until next time, continue watching hockey, go support junior hockey, and go Knights, go Knights.